What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Kids Out Collective. I'm Cornell. And I'm Cody. And we're back again with the second episode of Kids Not Retitled. If you could swallow this situation so sad. If you could swallow this bizarre situation so easily, the two buckets of burial shouldn't be a problem. Nothing to do with the entire episode. They didn't mention that at all. <laughs> the word barium was not spoken. But why would you even drink two, bar- <laughs> two buckets of it? I don't even understand. So we're starting off pretty weird, pretty weird. The episode uh, starts off with this old man working on his golf swing, and he uh, is asking how the whole kids Nodder situation is going. He said, you know, it's starting off. I believe it's a bear at the time. Was it a bear? Yeah. I'll be, I'll okay. Be. With his little weird ass. Mascots do the sword. X on their face. That, something's gonna happen with that. That's too weird to just be not a thing. But um, he says, you know, how's it going with the experiment and everything? And he said, it's, you know, it's coming along. And then he was like, all right, well, that's step one of super happy, awesome town. I want to go there. Yeah, and then he swings. And then the intro starts. Uh, you want to show him a little bit? Perfect. Yeah, step up, son. Yeah, step up. And so, the intro starts, once again, love the intro, beautiful, and all the lights and stuff, it's really, it's really working on me. And then we go over to, they're still in the building from the last episode, they didn't go anywhere since then, and then she reveals, I say she, Sonazaki, the uh, conductor of all these experiments, reveals a little bit more about what they're trying to achieve, and that is that they want to make each other, get to know each other better. And through that, they have to start revealing certain things about themselves. She asks them, well, you know, give yourself a little intro. They all give themselves an intro, what class they're in, their name, and all that stuff. And it ain't wrong. They fucking all get shocked. And uh, they have the main character all chained up with the weird-ass mascots just ready to tase the shit out of them. If they do anything wrong, and they're like, well, how are we supposed to know? So the main point that she's trying to do is get them to uh, reveal something very personal about themselves. Because she wants them to all be friends. All be nice, close, and attached. And personal on a, on a, on a, in a way that you don't want other people knowing these things about you. Squad. So, <laughs> is that what makes a squad? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the first thing happens is she lets two Dobermans out. And they just break through some glass and they unlatch their muzzles, which look badass. And then Tinga's the only one that's like really freaked out. He just starts hauling ass, man. And uh, we find out about him that he's terrified of dogs. I mean, his route, he's a big, tough badass, right? And his route to school is made in which he doesn't have to encounter any dogs whatsoever. So he's just fucking terrified of dogs, doesn't like them. So we find that out about him. And instead of doing a little ant and getting shocked, we get a little, you know, a nice little ding. And we find out more about Tanga. And then the character after that, we proceed to find out more about Nico and... Just very eccentric. All the little doodads on her belt and in her hair, I'm starting to realize, like, interact. And they're either their eyes are moving or if she cries, something on it cries. It's really weird and different, but I like it so much. She's a very eccentric character. Sonazaki then proceeds to explain about how, you know, it has to be something super intimate and personal. And since they did the first one, they're like, all right, well, the basement's empty. And she just starts fucking blowing up the bottom of the building for what exactly we don't know yet. But... Things start collapsing and everybody starts freaking out. And then, why did Nico wind up admitting her? Because the shit was collapsing. The fucking piece of ceiling yeah, fell just behind her. Oh, yeah, yeah. And everybody was arguing. Not just that, but a, a timer starts. A timer starts saying, all right, guys, well, the game is on. And they had like 30 seconds. And then everybody was like, well, what the fuck? Like, uh, Chidori doesn't even know what to confess yet. And then Nico's like, all right, I got it. And she just, at .28 seconds left, confessed that she really doesn't believe in fairies that <laughs> her point being is that she's like i'm this super hot super rich like super sweet girl and like i'm too perfect so i have to be really weird that's my reasoning and everybody's like well, are we supposed to agree with this like what are you talking about but it was serious she doesn't really believe in fairies. she just does it to be fake weird apparently and uh they still say she's pretty eccentric so she was very happy about that she's probably one of the sweeter characters i really like her and tanga so far i have to say the two of those are my definite favorite so far then we move on to yuda uh i don't even think the first three characters like personal things are <laughs> even that serious but chidori sees a poster on the wall i believe it was chidori and 
it was just of a chubby dude with a nice smile. <laughs> and it turned out to be Yuta. And he refused, like, he really didn't want to see it. Tay just busted his balls about it. Like, ah, that's more than just a little weight gain. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, in middle school, I gained a lot of weight easily. So he's just on the ground crying. <laughs> it upset a body. Yeah, his face was real flushed as soon as he It wasn't, wasn't really that. But whatever, I guess he's just a vain character in general. Well, not vain, it was just super embarrassing. <laughs> if you're a child, you... Shit. He tried to be the pretty boy. He tried so hard to be the pretty boy. Yeah. And uh, then you have Mika, who is contemplating the whole saying the thing that's hardest to say. And she obviously has a secret that she doesn't want to tell. And they're all, you know, pointing fingers at it. You'll see what you have to say. And she's like, no. And then she runs out of the room. And they completely ignore that. So, and then you see her go into a... Uh, I don't know what you call where they keep you know dead body. We call it a mortuary, which you know. Yeah, what, isn't that a mortuary? I mean, it doesn't have to be an entire building. It's just yeah, just just a little room. And uh, you see a body come out calling her name. I don't know how they even pulled that off. I hope that gets explained later. <laughs> yeah, Channing to her name that she just needs to break, like just fucking break, <laughs> just, just break make her. a break. But uh, yeah, and after they find out the thing about Yuta, they and. Chidori says, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm like, and Sonozaki is like, that's fine. Let's just move on. And then they let him up the elevator to the roof. And there you have Agata hanging off of a crane. Real nonchalant as always. <laughs> she, <laughs> we go onto the roof and you see Agata and she's like, hey. <laughs> Long time to see guys. Yeah, hanging off a crane, but there's nothing underneath it. It's not a piece of building. It's just way up in the air. And there we go with Sunazaki just egging them on, like, all right, well, it's confession time. Come on, Usher. And, like, they, Ch Chidori, once again, she just doesn't even know what to confess until she sees Agata, the main character, in peril. And these two characters, just like at the beginning of the, uh, of the very first episode, you see that they started off as friends, so they've been knowing each other, you know, I, I'd imagine since they were, like, you know, youngish. And, uh... Agatha just starts apologizing that, you know, he doesn't feel anything and he's just kind of cold and, you know, he's trying to recognize certain things about his character more and then, you know, he just doesn't have that connection like Sonazaki told him. But Chidori starts realizing that he has changed, you know, especially recently. So the, uh, <laughs> as she's telling him to confess and everything, she starts dropping the crane that uh, Agatha's on and he starts becoming more and more in danger and he winds up hitting the side of a building and he gets stuck and then Chidori realizes, like, it, it pushes her to realization that, you know, she has certain feelings for this character and, you know, she jumps right onto the crane with him and stuff and starts confessing that, you know, you've changed so much and you are much more different than uh, when we started way back in episode one and that she loved him and that was her confession and, uh... Right then and there, <laughs> the uh, we see a lot more play from the little wrist thing. Like that was doing some real cool stuff. Like, yeah. just, like it was like a, a, a walkie talkie for all of them, and it, it would just tell them when they would complete the task. Yeah, it was like it was like uh, it's doing more than connect was well, connecting them, but it's doing it in different ways other than pain. Yeah, it's practically its own little gadget, actually. But it's uh, a transform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cornell's point was being that. If you could do all these things, they better have like some kind of power suit come out of that bitch and transform them, kids Niver style. I but... checked the, the the wiki page. It said action on it. <laughs> and uh, this was just a very emotional episode. They had you know lots of feelings and I mean really they had good animation but no action per se. And we realized that, you know more and more about each character and they start to you know give us a little breadcrumb trail of more character detail and information and I like what I see so far. Uh anyway after we see Shidori give her confession, a doctor decides that he wants to revise his Yeah. You know, well no not only that before that, just right before that, they were on the crane and then they wound up falling off and just so happen to have an absolutely perfectly placed mat with those weird yeah, ass yeah. mascots. That's crazy that all the debris <laughs> fell around it. Yeah, it's just two people, a mat, debris. But uh, as soon as they did that, another thing came out, the little wrist, and it was just like, just a little party style confetti and stuff. 
So it does, yeah, I guess that. I don't know <laughs> where that's going to get them. But it was, it was a nice little touch. I liked it. We just, it just made us start really thinking, like, what the what can come out of these wrist things? What do they do? But uh, continue with the batons. batons. <laughs> yeah, but he decides to revise his answer, and he just says that, you know, he never knew that Chidori felt that way about him, and he appreciates that he knows that he is liked by someone, and that maybe being a kid's lover isn't a bad thing, and that he'll enjoy it. And, you know, as that, and then Sonazaki says some weird, weird, real weird stuff, you know, like, that answer is fine, because apparently he's forgotten something. So, we definitely, I mean, just episode two, but we definitely have a lot more mysteries to go. And the biggest one is given to us at the end, which is Mika's. They show Mika coming out from God knows where and looking real grim and dramatic and she's like, oh yeah, my confession? <laughs> I killed someone. And then it just <laughs> ends. <laughs> so, Sonazaki's coming with a real, a lot of different revelations and real ominous stuff that she's talking about. She she did admit that they did a lot of research on these characters to know their background and a lot of different things about them. So, it's just interesting to see I'm very... How did they find out Nico didn't really believe in fairies? Like, what, what research did they have to do to figure that out? <laughs> That's a good question. But so far, it's still... It's, I really thought it, something else would come out from this. I mean, they did emphasize that you're trying to learn these characters and all that stuff and yeah, just, that's about, what the whole episode it's about is feelings. About. It's yeah, about feelings so far this is about feelings and I just want everybody to start kicking ass like no really nobody has any fighting skills other than Tango with his butt bumps and shit hey but the, when she jumped down the building to the crane that was a real hardcore parkour so you never know there was no she just jumped <laughs> she, had to, she had to jump onto one thing and then run down this thing. Did she? Jump. Yeah you're right you're right I, oh okay I thought you meant when they were falling off the crane yeah. and uh there's still a whole character we haven't been introduced to yet. That yeah, and he's like even in, yeah. he's even in the intro itself, which is strange to me. And uh, it's not like uh, Kill a Kill per se, because man, I love Kill a Kill's intro, um, especially the later half of the season, because it changes so much. And I mean, even with the outfits that they would get, the intro would change piece by piece. So it's just so weird to me that they would have an intro with a character that we don't even know about. The yet. intro at the end it gives no information about the show, or whatever, but it's still great. But like, I, I like it's a mystery. Even even with all, if you have Crunchyroll, all the character videos that they did, they really didn't give you information about the show. So it At really all. could go anywhere. And they told you so much about the characters without saying anything about the characters. <laughs> that was which crazy. Is very fun, I guess. I feel like both shows need to do that, but it's an original show. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's original, so I mean, we're just that. taking it as it is, really. So. We see the preview for the next episode, like Cornell said, and it gives us absolutely nothing. It gives us as much about the ep episode as this episode's title gave us about the episode. <laughs> so, so we're random. just no really... Part, no part is even mentioning it. We'll, we'll tell you the next review. <laughs> but yeah, I'm liking it so far, man. It's, it's very interesting. I'm, I mean, I'll definitely keep up with it. I mean, we make it review. We have no choice. Yeah. No choice. We're, we're in see it. Us. <laughs> Weekly with this. We're in it to win it, man. But, uh, alright guys, that'll be it for today. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, all that good stuff if you like what you saw. Leave a dislike if you didn't like what you saw. We tell take us what whatever. You think. Yeah, tell us what you think. And, uh, we'll see you next time. Have fun. Yes, yeah, is that? <laughs> is that good? Okay. You play the charger. But fishing the ball is lucky. Do 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 do.